doing a request here today. I was uh, going to do a, a gum chewing sports ramble. And uh, before I had, had a chance to film with somebody, I saw a comment saying, you know, they, they were like, can you do a, a hard candy sports ramble? I was like, all right, I'll just change it to hard candy. So this is a, a request for a hard candy sports ramble. I'm just going to ramble about whatever football playoff start tomorrow. So. Um, got the little thing here on my Instagram. I'm pretty sure the Giants and Vikings play tomorrow. The only game I know for sure, though, is I'm pretty sure Rick Bucks and the Cowboys are on. A lot of people think the Giants are going to upset the Vikings. I know the Vikings have like a minus point differential now. They only have four losses, but those four losses, like, the Cowboys blew them out. And I, they lost another game, right, by like 20 plus. But, and they won a lot of tight games. I could see that happening and upset, but I don't know. If I had a guess, I'd think the Vikings win another close game. They did beat the Giants in a close one earlier this year. Um, I got the Niners and the Seahawks. That, that should be a decent game, too. The Seahawks are pretty solid. Um, and they got Denver's five pick. Thankfully, Denver won the knob that after top three pick. <laughs> Speaking of Denver, real quick, they fired their coach, and all of a sudden, the last two games of the season, like Denver's offense picks up. I don't know if that's a coincidence or what, but at least it gives me a little hope that Russell Wilson can come back next year and be much better than he was this year. We'll see. I think the Niners win that game, but I think that could be close too. <clears throat> I don't know if that could go. That guy Brock Purdy, though, right? The, like the Mr. Irrelevant, because he was the last pick in the draft. He's been playing, he's been like one of the best quarterbacks in the league since he came in. And their D is amazing, so they'll probably win that one. Bills, Dolphins. I mean, the Dolphins, two is not going to play. The Bills are going to probably steamroll them, I think. Although they played some tight games, too, but I think they get steamrolled. Maybe not, though. You never know. Ravens, Bengals. I'm going to take the Bengals in that one. Um, KC and the Eagles have the buys. The Cowboys and Bucks one is interesting. Obviously, the Bucks made it in under 500 record or whatever. Cowboys should beat them realistically handily. Of course, it, here's the thing that's annoying. The Bucks should not get a home playoff game. The only, the, either they seed it like every other sport, although hockey does it differently. They do, do it like they used to do it. It's like either nobody makes it from the playoffs from that division or the division winner does not get a home game. They shouldn't get a home game. If you're under 500, you shouldn't get home game. But I can see the Bucks winning that game. I would not be surprised. It'll be a close one, though. I think. Jags, right? What about the Jags? And they roll like seven in a row to win the division. They got the Chargers. I think that's going to be a really good game, actually. I don't know who's going to win that one. I don't know who's going to win any of these games, I'm going to be honest with you. You know, if I was just looking at Super Bowl, like looking at these teams now, looking at the Super Bowl, I mean, it's it's really head and shoulders for me, KC, Bengals, and the Bills. The top three teams, I think, are the best teams. I think any one of those three could make it. 
I wouldn't be surprised if the Bengals go back. And you know, the, the NFC is a little tougher. Um, I could see San Fran having a push because their defense is so good. But yeah, I don't know. Yeah, that's just talking about some of the playoffs a little bit there. Nothing crazy. Like I said, I don't go nuts. Following the stuff anymore. So I don't really know all the teams in and outs. Um, but the football players are always, I want to say unpredictable, but there's always an upset. Games are usually closer and stuff. What about that national championship game? So TCU lost 65 to 7. I got flashbacks of Denver getting blown out by the Seahawks in the Super Bowl. Everybody was like, see, told you. Because I guess TCU is in a... Is it the Big 12? So they're not. I guess that conference is not... As good, clearly, it's like the SEC or whatever. What's Michigan and Ohio State's conference? They're not the Big Twelve either, right? They couldn't. No, they couldn't be. Because TCU lost to Kansas State, and then Alabama blew up Kansas State in their bowl game. Why? I mean, I don't know enough about the conferences. Because right, isn't. State all in the same one. I gotta look that up. Like I said, I don't know enough. I'm not. I like like following the rankings and stuff of college football, but I don't know enough. The big, they're the Big Ten. Okay, then. <laughs> and the Big 12 is... Uh, I mean, they have Texas in there, but I guess Texas hasn't been as good. Sometimes I get confused, because some teams... College is the football team's great. And the basketball team sucks. Or the basketball team's great, and the football team isn't good. And hockey is always like the, like Minnesota, you know, Michigan, a lot of the northeastern teams too. Here, like Vermont and stuff, I think pop in there. Baseball, I don't know anything about about baseball. So the Pac-12. CC is the uh, CAAC, Tulane. Yeah, they have the ones that have Alabama, LSU, Mississippi, Auburn was not good, apparently. Oh, they have SEC West and SEC East. And I think they still finish up 500, but they're having this problem again. Lamarill didn't was unable to get a goal scorer, which is what the Islanders need. And the Islanders, other players were doing better than they normally would. And now it's coming back down. I think they only have six goals in their last four games. And their division's tough. The Capitals, Rangers, Penguins, Hurricanes, Devils, and them. You're going to have six teams. I think fighting for five spots, because I think five teams go from their division and three go from the other one. The Bruins, Lightning, Maple Leafs division. I'm just going to pick up the pace soon, though, because you can't afford to just keep losing. They've lost, they're like 0-3-1 in the last four. They lost last night 3-1. to They lost the night before that 2-1 in a shootout. 
And then the other two were kind of like 4-2 or something, too. I think they still finish over 500 regardless if they make it or not. But they need to score. Guys are hurt now. I think Barzell's out. Palmieri's been out for a bit. Um, someone else is hurt on offense. Um, it sucks, but they really do need to score. It sucks because they're Zorkin's an excellent goalie. And their D is still solid. But the problem is if those offensive players start to kind of come back down to earth a little bit because they were picking up the slack because that's what I was saying at the beginning of the year I'm like if they get the goals from team players they already have it's not going to matter that they didn't get an offensive player and they were getting that early in the year and now it's going back to what the problem was last year they can't score and they're screwed who knows though you know there's still time left um, but they can't slide anymore Portland as well. The Trailblazers are sliding worse. Um, I haven't looked, but they've lost like four in a row. And I'm just like, <clears throat> I was excited about them going into the year. And now I'm just like, if they are smart, I know Lillard's been loyal, and that's great. Just trade him to a contender a bunch of players back, pick whatever. Because you ain't winning a title with him. It doesn't matter anymore. Just move him. It's very disappointing. They'll probably still squeeze into that stupid thing they do in the NBA now. They'll be like the 9th or the 10 in a little 4 team play-in thing to get the 7-8. But I haven't been focusing too much on other stuff. I think we're the Nets were on a big winning streak, but I think Durant got hurt. Um, Golden State still seems to be terrible on the road, but I think they're doing much better, though. And if they get, get hot, it's going to be a problem for everybody else. Um, so the East seems to be the better conference at the moment, at least at the top. Um, I think the Bucks and Celtics are doing well. Like I said, the Nets went on a big streak. Baseball still in the offseason. Um, the World Baseball Classic is coming up soon, so that should be cool. Um, the Mets, the only thing that was interesting was the Correa thing, right? The, he left the Twins, and then the Giants signed him, but they found something in his physical, and then the Mets jumped in and signed him, and then the Mets found the same thing. But I think they were going to take the chance, and then he ended up back on the Twins. And of course, he makes it seem like, oh, I'm where I need to be. It's like, you left, dude. <clears throat> you want to be a net. You want to be a giant. The twins brought him back and were able to get him back because they already know his. his they, they have his physical from last year. They give him another one. They already know his problem, so they're probably like, screw it. He got more money per year, but he got less years, so he's making less overall. The Mets still have a really good pitching staff, though. They got that guy from Japan. I don't know his name, but he was sought after by a lot of teams. Um, and they signed the guy from the Cardinals, who's pretty good. Then they got Verlander, and Ventures are still in. Is it Carrasco still there? I don't know. But their lineup is virtually the same as last year. They needed another bat. The Yankees are going to have a similar, the same team. They got a picture, a picture too from the Giants, right? The Phillies signed a lot of people. They get the guy Turner from the Dodgers, so they could go back to the series. And then the Astros got that dude from the Cubs. Is it Brayu? I mean, not the Cubs, the White Sox. Was it a Brayu? I feel like they got him cheap, too, and that guy's really good. So the Astros will probably be the team to beat again anyway. But and it's all about the football playoffs right now. I'll, I'll pay attention to the scores, but I have no... Like I said, I've lost I've lost interest in football a while ago, like I even talked about in the past. That it's funny, but when Peyton came to Denver in, in two thousand twelve, it was like, Oh my god, and then I was still like heavily invested when they lost that playoff game. 
to the Ravens. I was crushed in overtime, and the safety blew his coverage with, like, 40 seconds left. And Flacco throws a bomb for TD to tie it. Like, what? And then they go to the Super Bowl the next year. They have the, like, record-breaking offense the next year. And then I feel like the Seahawks have a record-breaking defense. And their D was not to be denied that year. Like, they fucking... That's kind of gross. Their D was not to be denied. They overwhelmed Denver. They couldn't handle it. The safety to start the game on the first play. The second that happened, like, this game's over. This game's over. And it was. And then next year, they lost to the, uh... The Colts in, in the divisional round. So, you got the... I got the best of Peyton in four years. What he did in Indy. His whole career. You saw the losses in the divisional round that you probably should win. You saw Super Bowl births. You saw Super Bowl victory. But he did exactly what they needed him to do. They won the division every time. He was obviously terrible. The last season, I, I was shocked he actually even came back from his injury and got great years. But you saw it. The last, the tail end of that third year with him, that would have been the 14 season. He was starting to, what was the 15? No, it was the 14 season. He was starting to, He was starting to break down. You could see it like he had nothing anymore. And then the next year was terrible. And obviously Osweiler played games because I think he was banged up as well. He became a game manager at that point. It was weird. But the D was incredible. So, But even when they won that Super Bowl, I was happy. But I, I still follow. know this. Denver lost to Jacksonville in the 90. It was 96 seasons, 97 playoffs. They lost to the Jags in the divisional round. Big upset. I was done. Like, I was done for like a week. I was like, oh my god. Like, it was beyond heartbreaking. And then they won the back-to-back. But Because I, be- I became a Denver fan in, I think, 90 or 91. I just liked LA and the uniforms. Even though that old Denver logo is awesome. But. I just lost interest. Baseball was the first one for me to lose interest. But I still follow. I like to follow sports, but. I don't. Heavily, but same thing with Portland. Like, I was a massive Portland fan. Drexler, Clyde Drexler, I love that team. Then they immediately, of course, lost the Bulls. But I continue to like them. And uh, up until about the mid 2000s, maybe like, I think the last year I cared was when they came back down 3 0. No, it had to be after that. Maybe it was like the right before, like, Maybe it was, God, maybe it was like 10 years ago. I don't know. But I started checking out. The same thing still followed him. And liked him, but I wasn't like heavily invested. You know, the Islanders, I liked <clears throat> since I was a kid, but they were terrible for a long time. So <laughs> I wasn't allowed to cheer about. So they're the ones I probably invested in the most um, but even still I don't I try not to what are you gonna do you know it shit's out of your control <laughs> like I said if you're a fan you you can reap all the benefits when your team wins and you can just rag on the players and the owners and the GMs when they lose you're never at fault as a fan you know unless you physically do something to a player on the field or throw something at them but it's like you have it if you're a fan. That's why you go after other fans because that's like your thing. Like, oh, I got it to him. I didn't do anything to help the team win. But that's not to say people can't be passionate about the game. But I just, you know, once you check out, it's hard to like get heavily invested again. And when I was a kid, it was bad. Like, I lose it when Denver, like Denver. 
rambling on here, but Denver lost the first game of the season. I think I was in 10th grade. They played the Falcons. And they they were doing well in the first quarter. They're losing at the half by like maybe two touchdowns. And I lost my shit. It was so bad. I was like, oh my God. Football especially because it's only one game a week. So if your team loses, you got to stew in your juices for a week, pissed off. It, like, ruins your mood for the week if your team loses. It's ridiculous. <laughs> and when you're younger, there's, like, a, I hate to say it, it sounds weird, but an appeal to that, like, oh, ups and downs, everything's riding on these players. I don't know. You know. And then uh, you get older and you're, like, something clicks. And for me, that happened. It happened in baseball a while ago. Like, I always liked baseball overall as a sport. And I was a Yankee fan. And I cheered for them. I was pissed when they lost. But I never got as pissed. Like, when they lost to the Diamondbacks, I was more in shock. And that was more of a shocking thing anyway. But I would never get to the level of pissed as the three others. Although the Islanders, I didn't really get pissed because they sucked for so long. But Portland and Denver, I was like, <laughs> I would, it was embarrassing. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't know. That's fandom, right? It takes a hold of you, and, and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think sometimes it can be a problem, but you can't let it get in the way of, of your life. You can't let those sports dictate how you're going to feel emotionally. And sometimes that's hard, but um, sports are still fun, and I like I like getting the cards and stuff. And I love that's why I love like NCAA, the, the big the brackets and stuff. I just love the tournament structure of, of like hockey and basketball, especially. I just love going back and even going to like bad the you people probably gone to the uh, baseball, hockey reference, whatever reference, and you're looking at all the years and stuff, and you're like, oh, this is how it went this year. Oh, that was a close series. Wow. Look at this dude's stats in baseball from the early 1900s. They pitched 300 innings. Because they didn't throw that hard. <clears throat> you know. But, uh... Sports is always interesting. But yeah, that's a, a bit of a sport ramble there. NFL playoffs, if your team's in it, good luck to your team. you wanted the Dolphins to lose so they'd get a better draft pick because they have the Dolphins first round pick but you gotta hope they do better next year so the Seahawks don't get another awesome pick it worked out incredibly for the Seahawks that trade because it worked I thought that was a good trade I've said this before I thought it was a good trade for both teams the, the Seahawks get four prime picks they get a good tight end in Fant True Lock is a backup whatever you want to do with him I think they got a defender too I forget who Four picks, regardless, we're going to be. You're going to have two first. You have to, they have Denver's first and second next year, too. So, for Denver, if Russell Wilson can't bounce back and be solved and get them to the playoffs next year, they're going to have to cut him and, and then start over. And they, as a Denver fan, I will sell you, say this. It really feels like there's no light at the end of the tunnel these past seven years. Like, it just is progressively, like, getting worse. <laughs> I hope they do well. I want to see them make the playoffs again. Like I said, I still want to see them do well. But when they win or lose, I'm not, I'm like, cool. Or, oh, uh, you know, I'm not like, yes, or you. Ready to break something. But anyway, uh, thanks for checking this out.